Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In the last video, we discussed Wuthering Wave's massive launch and ended with a question. How will Zenless Zone Zero go with its launch? At the time of recording that last video, Zenless Zone Zero had over 40 million pre-registrations. We are now just short of one month post-launch for Zenless Zone Zero, so let's see how it was received. As is the case with many other big games, especially games that have online services, launch day for Zenless Zone Zero was rough, with performance issues being the biggest issue most players were facing. Players on console were unable to get past 45 frames per second in Lumina Square, and players on PC were experiencing crashes and freezes even on very powerful machines. Some users were able to fix these issues themselves with some troubleshooting, However, many others were left waiting for optimization fixes that the Zenless Zone Zero devs had spoken about on Twitter. In a post that reads, Since the start of Zenless Zone Zero's closed beta tests, Proxy's feedback has always been at the forefront of the dev team's priorities. We will listen to and record valuable advice provided by each and every proxy, actively pushing forward the optimization and development of each aspect of the game. In future updates, we will continue to optimize aspects such as game performance while preparing for the official release. We have also been hard at work developing the cloud gaming version of Zenless Zone Zero. In the near future, we hope that proxies will be able to enjoy new Eridu in more kinds of environments. Providing a better gaming experience to all proxies has always been the vision and goal for the dev team, and will continue to be a long-term focus. We will provide regular updates on optimizations and progress through the coming dev updates. We will continue our endeavor to ensure each and every proxy can make even more wonderful memories in new Eridu. Some of the players who were able to avoid the optimization issues were finding the game to be quite bland, boring, and lacking in many core aspects like story, combat feel, and character design. Discussions on Reddit were looking bleak with some people using the platform to give their review of the game. One post reads, Honestly, far too much dialogue that prevents gameplay. It's 80-20. Can sit with the audio on auto and it all takes 20 minutes before the next short burst of gameplay and fighting. The humor is meh. Animations are 10 out of 10. When I can play it feels fun, but I have to get through all of the lore and backstory that could be better done as you're going along. Like how in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you can find out a lot by paying attention to what's being said as you move along. This format of cutscene, dialogue, gameplay is outdated and detracts from the game, even for the gacha. I want to actually use the characters, they gotta fix that somehow. But of course, in classic Reddit fashion, people were being downvoted for expressing these opinions. As seen in this post, very boring. Sorry for all those stating their opinions and being downvoted. It's very boring, and that's someone who's played most Hoyoverse games from day one. Putting the optimization and content issues aside, there was more controversy surrounding the design choices around the release of Zenless Zone Zero, with players noticing a serious lack of human male characters available. One player summarizes the situation in a comment. There are five male characters. Wise isn't playable in battle. Lycanon and Ben are furries and Billy is an android. Anton is the only playable male human. Another player provides a screenshot of the female characters available and says, I do like cute female characters, but isn't Zenless Zone Zero kind of lacking in male characters? I want to see some handsome boys too. Players were also torn on another game design element. The TV system in the game was a heavily discussed topic, with players on both sides weighing in. Some players were enjoying the unique style, while others say it takes them out of the regular gameplay experience. The launch of Zenless Zone Zero on Twitch was slightly lower than previous gotchas that have come out. With a day one peak of 118,000 live viewers, it was behind Genshin Impact's launch by 18,000, and behind Wuthering Waves launch by 29,000. 
As with any piece of media though, the vast majority of players will just play the game in their own time and not engage with online communities. So of course, Twitch viewer statistics do not accurately represent people's interest in a title. However, they are still good data points to look at when getting a feel of the public's reception. I treat these viewer numbers the same as I treat reviews of products, knowing that many people will get a product and love it without even considering leaving a positive review, while others will hate it so much they don't want to waste a single second leaving a bad review. Zenless Zone Zero still has an active player base of approximately 650,000 monthly users according to player auctions data collected using Google Trends. However, compared to active player user data, there are 700,000 to 850,000 users who are enjoying the game on mobile alone, so we may need to wait for additional data as the game progresses. The content itself seems to be a little grindy for a lot of people who have left the game after its initial few weeks. This post details how long it will take to even reach max level. It reads, After hitting level 50, I was curious in how long it would take to hit max internet level. Here is the chart for how much experience you need for each internet level. So I simply assumed that I will only get 3.6k experience per day just doing the dailies plus weekly, 1.5k experience doing hunt and custom missions, and fast forward, it would take 360 plus days to hit level 60, starting from internet level 50. Max refreshing per day, it would take 160 days. I know we will get more quests, events, ether batteries, and hopefully more content that will give us experience. But for most of the players, I highly doubt they will reach level 60 in under a year. For a lot of players this can be a very big turn off when there are so many other games to try out right now and more coming in the near future. Games like Azure Premelia and Project Mugen speculated to release in the next 6 months or so. With Genshin Impact, Wuthering Waves and now Zenless Zone Zero competing for a similar audience, there's always going to be one that pulls a little ahead in the race. As content for a game dips, the players will move to other games and return when a new patch drops. It's a healthy gaming cycle that is common in many genres, not just gacha games. As it stands right now, Wuthering Wave's monthly player count is 700 to 850,000, Zenless Zone Zero monthly player count is between 600 to 800,000, and the undefeated king, Genshin, is sitting at an incredible monthly player count of almost 63 million players. I believe that we have player data from China boosting the numbers for Genshin, but that's likely due to how long the game has been out in comparison to the others. Both Wuthering Waves and Zenless Zone Zero had strong launch and may have drawn temporary attention from some Genshin players, but nothing has come close to taking the crown yet. What does the future of the gacha scene hold? How will Azure Promelia and Project Mugen go in the coming months? I look forward to finding out. Please feel free to share your thoughts or even reviews of the game in the comments because I'd love to read them and collect more opinions. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it and it's a great dopamine boost for me. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye everyone.